It feels so good to be out here, to get this sun in my face, to smell this air, to see myself through a foam. Let's get into it. Since the last time I've been on social media, not only did I step away from social media, but I stepped away from everything so that I could go and develop, work on, build strength with my mental health. I've been doing a lot of self-work for a very long time. Got a lot of people I can definitely speak my thanks to that supported me and, and been able to position things to me that have served purpose and contributing to me self-developing. But I suffered deeply, severely from depression, anxiety, and it led me to suicidal thoughts. I thought I always knew what it meant to hear what your why is, to hear what your purpose is, and to let that drive you. I thought I always knew what that meant until one day I pictured my son and I thought about him and I said, damn, if he was the age that I am at this moment, I'd be devastated. If he was the age that I am in the place that I was in, I'd be devastated. And that led me to truly accept what I thought I always accepted, but what I realized was more like acknowledgement it allowed me to truly accept what I needed to do for myself so that I may be able to go and take those necessary actions. Suicide for me, the thoughts of it had everything to do with me unfortunately being in the place that I was dealing with, the things I was dealing with, the depression, the anxiety, um, the stress, everything. It put me in a position where suicide in me was the piece of it. Bring me the peace. Let me not deal with this no more. Let me be clear, the suicide, the suicidal thoughts wasn't instantaneous. They weren't, they weren't just, okay, I'm stressed out, I'm depressed, I'm sad, you know, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm agitated. It wasn't just those things being a thing and then boom, right now kill me. Let me let me get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. It been years, it been months, it been weeks, it been days. And the build up and the build up and the build up and the build up. And the thing is, like, I was doing the best that I could, that I thought I was doing the best that I could. I thought that way, I truly felt that way. But yet I wasn't being able to, like, see and, and, and experience the results that I thought I should have been able to experience and see through me working on myself the way that I was, so much so that it wasn't working enough that I wanted to get the fuck up out of here. <clears throat> so I had that moment where I saw my son, picture my son in my shoes, was able to accept that this ain't no good. Immediately let my boss know, yo, I'm stepping away from my mental health. It's funny, I, I it was like I felt like Andrew Luck because he just did that shit in the NFL. And um, that was me. Got in contact with my family. Set up what was necessary for the care of my son. Did everything I needed to do to be able to remove myself from the responsibilities I had in this outside world so that I may be able to go and bring myself to this place that's behind me. I'm in the parking lot of Friends Hospital where I spent some time doing acute inpatient, being a patient there knowing that this is where I needed to be. They call it suicidal ideation. My ideation for suicide got out of control. When I was younger, that was a thing for me. When I was younger, it was actually a suicidal attempt. 14 years ago, same situation at a behavioral health hospital. And then here I am again 14 years later. Now, when it all came into play for me and it was the suicidal ideation, the suicidal thoughts, I said to myself in the moments that I was stronger then than I am now because I knew that I didn't have enough strength 
hear me out. I didn't have enough strength to actually attempt and commit the suicide as I did when I was younger, when I had enough strength to actually attempt it. And, you know, people like to say things like, oh, when they find out somebody commits suicide, it's like, oh, that person was weak. You know, why would they do that and all that other stuff? And, you know, they ain't think about the people, um, you know, that would have been affected by it. When you're in a position of even being suicidal to that degree, again, for me, it had everything to do about it being and feeling like it was to bring me peace. My suffering, my stress, the anxiety, the depression, all of my emotions, everything, my environments, all took a toll on me. And sure, you know, we all know, at least, let's not even say we all know. You know, some of us know about being able to remove ourselves from, you know, whatever we might have going on that might be uh, negative for us or might not be beneficial for us. Some of us know that. Some of us don't know that. Some of us know how to do that. Some of us don't know how to do that. I accepted what my reality was and bought myself here. I'm, I'm still in this parking lot. That's what's behind me right now. That's what's behind me. This is my car that I drove here and bought myself to this motherfucker in. These is my bags. They hold my motherfucking outfits of my motherfucking clothes throughout the time of me being here. This is my belt that you can't bring in there so that you don't have the opportunity of doing anything that would be able to allow you to harm yourself or others. My lack of belt on my waist, not even knowing because I walked out of this motherfucker, I took in the fresh air, hopped in my car, cut it on, cut, cut my phone on, powered it on. I had to charge it for just a hot second because it wouldn't even come on. It didn't hit record because from this moment on, I want to join the other voices that are out there speaking on the importance of your mental health. Everything that I was looking for that I came here for, I was able to receive. I was optimistic in everything about myself so that I'd be able to come here and receive whatever it was going to have for me. I didn't set any expectations. I didn't set any assumptions because I truly believe when you do that, as we know, they got the saying that when you set an assumption, you make an ass out of you and me. Well, me not being concerned with the you part, but being concerned about the me part, setting assumptions and setting expectations. If it don't come out with the result of the ideal or the ideology that I'm expecting from it or assuming it to be, then I, I you know, I play myself behind it. I hurt behind it, not having it be what I expected to be or what I assumed it to be. So I realized, well, let me stop making, ex let me stop setting expectations. Let me stop assuming so that I don't have to worry about feeling any type of way, good or bad, when, you know, it's something that's bad when I wanted it to be good or something that's good when I wanted it to be bad. I came here optimistic and open and was able to be able to, I was able to receive everything that I was looking for. Tools and how to control my emotions, coping strategies. One thing that I didn't realize that was a big thing for me was amongst the professionals within this mental health hospital, within this industry, I was also able to learn greatly from the other patients, the peers, in the same situation to whatever the degree of the specifics of what they got going on were. They contributed a lot to what this was for me.
let this be the beginning of me sharing, being transparent, offering insight of someone myself struggling with, struggled with, and having to work on my mental health. Someone that successfully came out on top of the other side of the possibility of suicide. When it came time to come back out here to be able to have this sun shine on my face, to be able to put a belt on my waist, to be able to look at a phone. Cause see what happens when you when you when you come to this setting, it's all about recovery. You're not gonna have any exposure to the outside world and you're not gonna have any exposure to anything that again could put you in a position to harm yourself or harm anyone else. And so a lot of things are taken to you are taken from you from the benefit of your recovery, for the benefit of your development, for the benefit of your health. When I was ready to come back out here, the hospital was on the same type of time with me. The day that I was looking for looking forward to having a conversation with them about starting to prepare myself for discharge, the hospital was on the same type of time as me and already started to position the words that I was planning to begin to inquire about. But let me say this about it. When I came in here knowing that I needed to be here, discharged, whenever that date was, I never I never looked forward to it. Like, I never thought about it. I never uh, assumed it to be this date. I never expected it to happen in this amount of time. I was in here until it, till it was going to be time. And, um, <clears throat> you know, my boss asked me, he like, how long you think you, how long you think? I don't know. My mom, my family, I don't know. I was optimistic to literally being able to accept and um, be okay with however long it was going to take. And even in there, I had challenges and obstacles and challenging days that still had me unsure. But when it started coming together, when everything started coming back together, when my confidence started building, to be able to look forward to the discharge deep, it was it was something that wowed me behind it. What it was that supported my discharge energy, the emotions surrounding my desire to start looking forward to being discharged, to come back out here outside of the, the, the um confinement of what's to support the recovery. I said, I'm ready to live again. And that shit fucked me up because it kind of was like, what you mean? But I knew exactly what it meant because I ain't feel like I was living in a long time. I felt like I was existing. I was just doing enough to get by, doing what I needed to do, being a man to that degree. There wasn't really no self in that. But here I am. Here go the start of my story. And now I'm ready to live again. And I say that with so much excitement. Fuck with me.